What's up guys, we're outside again. No lawn mowers, a slight breeze, but I got a dead cat on my shotgun microphone, so it's all good. That's a kind of windscreen, it's not actually a dead cat. But instead of a lawn mower today, I got a bird building a nest right above my head, so hopefully that doesn't mean any droppings fall in my hair. Ugh, we'll see, it's always something. At least I got some shade. Anyway, let's get into it. This is the Yonex Regna 98, and the way I got this racket was through a friend who had a student, he runs a tennis academy. One of his students went to Japan bought this racket and came back with it, lent it to him and he sent it to me. So I was actually the first person to string this one up. So shout outs to him. I'm gonna leave a link to his tennis academy in the description below. You guys can check it out, give it a follow if you want to. And yeah, truthfully, this racket really wasn't on my radar because it's one of those rackets that they do such a limited run of. I almost don't even consider it a real Yonex racket in some ways, which is silly, but it's just not part of their regular racket lineup. Like they don't have any sponsored players using it as far as I know. And you can't just go to a tennis shop and buy this racket. And on top of that, this racket is a lot more expensive than the rest of their lineup. So I just didn't see any reason to take this racket that seriously. I never had the idea that it wasn't a good racket or anything. I just thought that there's probably other rackets that are less difficult or expensive to switch to that I would be equally, if not more happy with. So that's how I got the racket. As for the rest of the video, I want to go over some of the things we'll cover. I took some notes here. <laughs> So we're gonna cover why is this racket so legendary? Why is it so expensive and so sought after? Why is it so hard to get? Does it offer something truly unique and how does it compare to the other Yonex rackets in their lineup? So to answer the first question, why is this racket so legendary, so sought after, etc.? I actually had to go to the Yonex website in Japan and translate the entire page to get some kind of an idea about what this racket is actually marketing. And I think the thing that stands out as something that justifies the price tag the most is that this racket is manufactured with their most experienced and highest skilled factory workers on the assembly line. So they essentially take their highest quality, highest skilled employees to manufacture this racket, which would seem to result in the best quality, the best consistency. So that makes sense to me. That justifies the price tag a bit for sure. And Yonex is absolutely regarded as probably the highest quality control retail manufacturer of tennis rackets. And so they take that up a notch to manufacture the Regna. So if you combine that with the fact that they do a very limited run of these rackets, it's not very difficult to understand why this has a higher price tag. Let me double check what the price is actually supposed to be because if you're trying to get this racket in America, it's a whole different ordeal and you're gonna start seeing price tags up in the seven, eight hundred dollars So the actual yen price is 51,700. And let's see, let's convert that to American dollars. Yeah, that actually comes out to $373. And I'll leave a link in the description for the Japanese website showing the Regna 98 page. And you guys can go through Google to translate it yourselves. There should be like a website extension that pops up when you go to the website to translate everything from Japanese into English. And some of the translations will obviously be a little bit wonky, but you'll get the gist of what the racket is marketing. So some of what I just told you guys does explain why the racket costs just shy of $400. That is if you buy it in Japan, but if you try to get it when you're in America, it's probably gonna cost you a lot more. And back to how this video started out, I told you guys that my buddy had a student go to Japan to get this racket, and that's how I got it. I don't think that you can just call somebody up to get this racket and have it sent to you. So that's part of the reason that if you're trying to get this racket when you're in America or somewhere else, you're gonna start seeing ridiculous price tags because somebody had to go through a bunch of hoops to get that racket. So it's that on top of the limited run. I think COVID restrictions even made it more difficult for them to manufacture rackets. So it became even more limited or potentially more expensive to manufacture. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not saying I have the entire story, but once you understand how difficult it is to get this racket and what goes into making this racket, the price tag makes more and more sense. So long story short, it seems like if you're in Japan, you go to Japan and you buy this racket like from Yonex, you can pay around 400 bucks or maybe a little less. Anywhere outside of that, you might be looking at $800. Do you see that? These twigs are just flying out of the tree. So let's talk about why this racket is so sought after. Part of it obviously has to do with the fact that it is such a limited run, it is so expensive. I think that kind of thing causes a lot of intrigue. But after having played with it and after having gotten relatively familiar with every single Yonex racket that is currently offered, and by that I mean the V-Cores, the V-Core Pros, and the E-Zones, I'm actually able to answer the question, does this racket offer anything unique that those rackets do not? And I can definitely say yes. Yes, it does. 
So when I set this racket up, I strung it with zero, my favorite string. It's got the best snapback durability, tension maintenance, etc. I wanted to do this racket justice, so I strung it up with my favorite string at 47 pounds, which honestly feels just about right. I could have gone a couple pounds lower. I would have rather gone a little bit lower than go higher, let's put it that way. But 47 was mm, really nice, really nice. And for the most part, I played with this racket in stock form, minus the overgrip that I put on top. It's Vocal V-Dry, my favorite overgrip. And the base grip on this racket is actually a leather base grip. That's how the Regna comes. And some of you are like, well, it better come with leather. I'm paying a lot of money for that. And I think it actually is the only Yonex racket that comes with a leather base grip. Some rackets offer that, like the Pro Staff Autograph did. Some of the Dunlops do. Not every racket comes stock with leather, but this is another one that does. It's always the nicest ones that do, you know? And honestly, this racket didn't take me very much time to adjust to at all. I think the racket I was most familiar to and everything that I was, I was comparing every racket pretty much to the E-Zone 98. And so it seemed very appropriate that I was comparing this racket to the E-Zone 98. And I think at first glance, you might think that it is the most similar to the E-Zone 98. And I don't want to say that that's not correct, but that was my reference point. And at the time, which was actually towards the end of my time with the E-Zone 98, I'll make another video about that. But that was a point in which I was using lead tape on the ESO 98 to try to stabilize it more. I figured out that the racket just felt a little too floppy for my taste. So I had a decent amount of weight at the three and the nine area and also some other parts a little bit. So I did have a relatively customized form of the ESO 98 compared to the Regna 98. That being said, though, I was extremely familiar with the ESO 98 in its stock form. So with that out of the way, what were some of the first things that I noticed when hitting with this? I noticed that the racket was actually quite a bit more stable, just more stable right away. And I also noticed that the racket felt as though it had a smaller sweet spot. And with a few more minutes with this racket, I realized that this also has more controlled power, all of which are little to relatively significant differences that added up to me. Honestly, if I had to pick between those two rackets, I'm pretty sure I'd pick the Regna. To be honest, I'm not sure that there are many qualities I would prefer about the ESO 98 over this. I've been on a long racket journey, but long story short, I got to the ESO 98 from the ESO 98 Plus. But to be honest, I was never really a 16 by 19 guy anyway. But these are all stories for another time. But when I went from the ESO 98 Plus to the regular ESO 98, I felt a big difference in stability on the racket. And it's because for plus length rackets, they actually take... You guys gonna fight right above me? I don't think these birds care at all that I have a Regna right here. Incredible. Anyway, my point is that the Ezone 98 isn't a perfect racket. I don't believe that there is such a thing, but it also had a lot of qualities that I wish the Ezone 98 had more of. I've noticed recently for my backhands that a more stable racket makes a huge difference on how I'm able to hit my backhand. It also makes a big difference with the quality of my volleys. And this racket just offered me an immediate upgrade to both of those shots. And I didn't feel like it really came at much of a cost. So this is probably a great point in the video to start comparing it to the rest of the Yonex lineup. So I'm sure some of you guys are wondering where exactly does the Regna fit on the spectrum of Yonex rackets, right? You got the V-Core Pro, you have the V-Core and you have the E-Zone. Where does the Regna fit? Is it somewhere on a spectrum or does it belong in its own category? And I think my answer is going to be a bit of both. But I'll put this into perspective for you. So compared to the ESO 98, I found that it had much more controllable power, but still really good power. I think the ESO 98 gave you more free power, but sometimes it was there when you didn't want it. I think the ESO 98 was also a little bit more spin friendly, but it came at a massive cost in stability. But I was able to achieve really good topspin with this racket, so I have no complaints with the spin potential of the Regna 98. As far as comfort goes, it actually did feel like a little bit more comfortable of a racket than the ESO 98. And as far as string pattern goes, I think it's string pattern, it's drill and string spacing were the most similar to the Ezone 98. Now, compared to the V-Core series, I actually think that the most appropriate comparison to this racket would be the V-Core 95. That racket feels very similar to this one. And I think if you wanna buy a Yonex racket that's easier to get, the closest one might be the V-Core 95. The main differences between that and this would be that I think at any level of power that you're trying to access on the V-Core 95 is gonna require a little bit more work. I also think that this racket is probably a little bit more spin friendly, but in terms of the stability and the control that it offers, it feels very, very comparable. But this racket does have kind of a unique way of flexing, and that's a little bit different from any of the rackets. I'll come back to that in a second. The last racket to compare it to would be the V-Core Pro series. The V-Core Pro is gonna feel softer for sure. That is one of the softest feeling rackets, but that is one of my biggest problems with that racket. While it does feel 
heavenly and buttery at times, I do feel like that racket just becomes like a wet noodle when I'm really hitting through the ball. Like anytime I'm trying to put as much topspin as I can or just hit through the ball as much as I can, that racket just keeps on flexing and I lose power. I feel like I'm losing control. I really feel like that racket specializes in feeling great. Again, it's so comfortable, so buttery. And that racket has really good depth control, especially close up. I feel like I can hit nasty angles and nasty drop shots from anywhere with any pace on that racket. But when it comes to actually pushing an opponent back or dealing with being in a counter punching situation, that racket really struggles. Or if there's just kind of a ball sitting there and I need to kill it, put it away, the directional control and the angle, that kind of thing is great, but it just doesn't, I just can't get that put away power. And that's true for every single V-Core Pro that I've tried. I've tried the 97, the 97H, and the 97D. They all feel this way. So I can't really play with those rackets. It does offer some really cool stuff, but at the end of the day, it's just too much of a sacrifice, too much of a loss in power. I feel like I'm only allowed to maybe access 85 to 90% of my full power. And that last 10%, is really important for having that game control where you can punch back with the really heavy hitters or push somebody way back and then hit a great drop shot. So the V-Core Pro series isn't really for me, but as a reference point, this racket feels much less noodle-like while still offering some similar levels of comfort. Again, it has a very unique way of flexing that I haven't felt on the other Yonex rackets. And you still get great control, but you have better access to power. And while it might be a little bit more easy to overhit a ball on this racket, I feel like your connection to the ball, the smaller sweet spot, and just the overall control that it offers, it's not a struggle to be in control of the depth of the ball. Let's put it this way. I feel like the V-Core Pro is more likely to make it impossible to overhit the ball, whereas this racket, if you want to overhit the ball, you can. Whereas the E-Zone is more like, okay, good luck not overhitting the ball. So it's a new day, guys. We'll finish out this video with a little indoor filming. So who is the Regna for? Besides the wealthy who have 800 something dollars to blow on a racket like this, or people with a unique connection to be able to get this racket close to what the retail price is actually supposed to be, which in US dollars is about 370 right now. So in terms of how the racket plays, who is it for? One of my reasons for loving Yonex is because of their quality control. And that is one of the primary reasons that I feel like if you can find a Yonex racket that you really like, then you should. Now, I'm not necessarily implying that the quality of manufacturing on the individual racket is better than, say, a brand like Head or Babolat or Wilson. But what you can definitively say is that if you take a pile of 20 identical rackets from Yonex, versus those other brands, I think you are much more likely to see the specs from one racket to the next vary a lot less. I've done this in a lot of videos, but I'll put maybe two or three different Babolats or Wilsons or Heads or whatever in my swing weight machine tool. And it's really unsurprising to find a difference of 10, 15 points in swing weight from one racket to the next. And that big of a difference is coming from things like balance being off or maybe the weight being off, generally a combination of both. So when it comes to a brand like Yonex, the actual numbers, the actual measurements of the racket are going to be much closer to spec than they will be on another brand. And that point brings me to want to say a few more things. First, it was a point I made earlier about this racket, right? Some of the marketing of this goes into saying that this racket is manufactured with the best of Yonex's team. So the implication there is an extra high level of quality. And the sort of funny thing is that it kind of makes you feel like, wait, are the other rackets manufactured to a good quality? And the answer is of course, yes, because Yonex does sit, I think at the top of the quality control spectrum. And I think the Japanese people culturally just have a really high standard for quality. If you've ever been to Japan, everything from the food to how clean the cities are, to how on time the trains are, everything is just about as perfect as it can be within reason. And that type of perfectionistic way of being does translate to the quality control of Yonex. And one of the reasons they're able to achieve that is because not only are the rackets designed in Japan, they're also manufactured in Japan. So it's all being done in the same area. Everyone else manufactures it from the country generally that the company is from, like Babolat is from France. And a lot of their rackets will say designed in France, made in China. Yonex is designed in Japan and made in Japan. Japan just generally has really high standards for quality. And on top of that, they're able to more closely oversee everything because it's being done in the same area. 
So for a quick second there, I was thinking, does the fact that this racket is made with their best employees in the assembly line, does that imply that the other Yonex rackets are made to a lesser quality? And does that make those rackets look bad in comparison to the Regna? Eh, I don't really think so. And again, it just goes back to the point that, well, Yonex is at the top of that quality control spectrum and maybe the Regna just takes that up a notch. And I don't have two Regna 98s to compare side by side and measure the swing weight and the twist weight and the balance and the overall static weight. So I'm not really sure if quality means quality control in terms of being close to spec or if it has some other implication about the quality of how the racket is manufactured in terms of durability or consistency in the carbon fiber layup or something. I'm not really sure. Like what is exactly better about the Regna? But rest assured, I think any Yonex racket is manufactured to some of the highest standards in the tennis industry. I really wanna make that clear. The other point is that I actually maybe haven't been able to find a Yonex racket that I feel like I've meshed with really well. I like the idea of the V-Core Pros, but as I said earlier in the video, all of them are just a bit too mushy. And the sacrifice of top end power is not worth a lot of the pros that that racket does offer. As for the E-Zone series, I find generally all of them to be a little bit too powerful. I love the super tight and control oriented string pattern of the E-Zone 98, but surprisingly that racket is still really powerful. And I'm not really sure exactly what it is about the V-Core series I don't love. I actually don't think that they're that spin friendly. I find that the E-Zone 98 is much more spin friendly than any of the V-Cores. Some people might have a problem with that and find that to be a controversial opinion. And just to further my point, the V-Core is called the V-Core maybe because it's more similar to a V-Core Pro. And on spec, the V-Core rackets have a thinner beam and are generally a little less powerful. So there's a lot of things on paper and side by side just by looking at the E-Zone that would imply that the E-Zone is actually the more spin friendly racket. I think the only thing that doesn't is the fact that the string spacing on the E-Zone 98 is a little bit tighter than it is on the V-Core 98. But you guys should know that string spacing isn't the most important thing when it comes to generating topspin or a racket being topspin friendly. And I don't wanna to get too far into that conversation now because we're talking about the Regna, but I do bring that point up because having not been able to really mesh well with a Yonex racket, which is again, a little annoying because I feel like they represent some of the best quality rackets I would love to mesh well with that, but I just haven't been able to. But if I had to pick a Yonex, then you know maybe I have one or two that I could. However, after trying the Regna and getting really acquainted with all the Yonex rackets in the racket lineups between the V-Core, V-Core Pro and the E-Zone, at least at this point in time, I feel like I can confidently say that the Regna 98 might be my favorite Yonex racket. I definitely like it a lot better than the V-Core Pro series. It offers a lot of similar qualities that people go to the V-Core Pro for, but it doesn't go too far in that direction that it becomes like a wet noodle when you're hitting harder and harder. So I do feel like this racket does offer a solid, stable, and still comfortable feel. And compared to the V-Core series, I just feel like it's a little bit more stable. It has better feel. The sweet spot feels more precise, but I was mentioning that the V-Core 95 would be the most similar to this racket. But I much prefer the way that this racket flexes and feels than I think anything from the V-Core series but I would pick a V-Core over a V-Core Pro. Now, when it comes to the E-Zone, again, this racket feels more stable, more controlled, and I feel like the sweet spot is more precise. It does feel smaller, but it's not like so small that it's really hard to hit, but it gives you great stability. It gives you good power if you can generate it, which is something I could never get with the V-Core Pro. Good spin, good touch. I mean, arguably, I think this is one of Yonex's best all around rackets. So yeah, this would be an easy contender for my favorite Yonex racket. And at first I didn't think it would be. So at this point in time, if I had to pick a Yonex racket, I might pick the Regna 98. And if I had to pick something else, it might be the V-Core 95. It might be the Ezo 98 Tour. But yeah, this racket just has the right balance of so many things. And it is a little bit unfortunate that it has to be so difficult to get this racket. You know, I look at a company like Head and they have so many lineups, right? They got like the Instinct, the Prestige, the Speed Pro, Gravity Pro, Radical. And I know that there's a couple more out there, but my point is that Yonex essentially just has V-Core, V-Core Pro, and the E-Zone series. Those are the main three rackets. I feel like Yonex could actually do pretty well to bring a racket like the Regna in to be circulated into their lineup like the rest of their main three, because it does offer something different and it does offer something that a bit of those offer without going too far in the direction of any of them. And I think a lot of people that haven't been able to mesh with a Yonex racket would actually love this. So this is a very unique racket to Yonex and it does offer something different from the rest of their rackets. But is what this offers worth an extra hundred dollars? 
I don't know. I feel like if they produce this racket to scale the way that they do the E-Zone and the V-Core and so on, they should be able to bring the price of this one down a little bit, but maybe that's not what they want to do. And it is kind of cool to have this luxury boutique, hard to get racket, but it's a super legitimate racket. You can play great tennis with this. There's nothing really gimmicky about this. I mean, this is a solid racket. I could switch to this and be happy. And it plays in a way that's very competitive to the rest of its lineup. I'm not saying everybody that's a Yonex fan would prefer this over something else that they offer, but I think some people would, and I'm pretty sure at least at this point, that I would. So there it is. That is my review of the Yonex Regna 98. I'm very lucky and thankful to have gotten my hands on one of these. Be sure to check out the links in my description. I have some good discounts down there for you guys on some of my favorite products. I do not endorse anything that I don't use personally. So anything I'm providing a link on down below is something that I absolutely swear by. And one of those things is Restring Zero. That is the string in here. Amazing top spin. Outperforms anything that I've tried except one other string, which is Wasabi by Toroline. And I also have a link for that down in my description. Both of those strings offer insane amounts of snapback and top spin. Zero, I think has a little bit better tension maintenance, but Wasabi is actually a little bit softer. So to each their own, I don't really think you can go wrong with either of them. But for this video, I strung this up at 47 pounds and it was wonderful. So check that out and I will see you guys in a future video. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you guys have any questions. I'm happy to answer. Answer. And I guess that's all for now. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, well, it'll come to me in another video or maybe by the time I'm editing this. We'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you later. And I hope you're playing some good tennis. The weather here has been absolutely beautiful. Today's a ball machine day. I got to work out that backhand. My backhand's in the playtest footage. We're actually looking good. So maybe I'll stick with the two-hander. We'll see. More on that and more later. Until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. Boom.